Hey everybody, it's uh, Von Chapangu here. Um, how's it going? It's really hot here. Uh, I just uh, I just posted a video uh, maybe five ten minutes ago of uh, the LDV for bolt action, and uh, I thought, ah, you know, I, I do a lot of World War II, and you know, maybe I should keep my skills up on other things as well. So I thought I would do a stand of uh, Gallic uh, Celts here, or Celts, uh, depending on how you'd like to pronounce it. Um, basically, uh, I just got these guys prepped, um, you know, uh, primed them up. Um, I basically put some flesh on them. The flesh I was using is called sh Shaded Flesh by Americana. I guess it would be equivalent to like Dwarven Flesh by GW. And then I gave it a burnt sienna wash. Um, they're dry right now. I, I blacked in the eyes I'll get in the mouths uh, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the flesh up first and then I'm going to talk you through how I did that and then I'm going to go through and do the pants with plaid and uh, tartan and uh, do the weapons and hopefully get the shields all done. I want to get it, see if I can get it all done today um, and hopefully I can get them based and put on a stand tomorrow and get this video out as ASAP. Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, the flesh on these guys is done. Um, I also went through and I blacked uh, in the uh, bracelets and jewelry and neck pieces and hilts and the swords and things like that to give it a bit more contrast while we take a look here. Um, basically, what I did is I went in uh, with the base coat, I gave it two layers of highlight, then I gave it another wash. Then I went through after the wash had dried and, and just sort of picked out a little bit more highlights. It looks really, really chunky there, uh, but you have to realize that on your screen they're probably about four or five times larger than they are in real life. So it actually, you know, the trick of the, the eye here, they actually look pretty good um, at a smaller scale, um, which is basically what I wanted for, for a tabletop and get these guys knocked out in a day. Next, what you're going to see is I'm going to do their uh, trousers, their pants, I should say, uh, and their shields, um, and I'm probably going to leave the weapons to last. I'm going to do the pants and do the tartan on the pants. I'm going to explain how I did it, um, and it's very, very simple. It's a lot easier than a lot of... It's really daunting at first, but once you figure out the pattern on how to do it, it's really, really simple. So, uh, yeah, just stay tuned. That's coming up next. Okay, here they are done uh, with the flesh and everything else. Um, I've just put the base coats on uh, on their pants, their trousers. <laughs> um, and uh, I've, I've gone for uh, three, four different colors here. Uh, uh, sort of a brown, a blue, a green, and sort of a tan. Um, just to give them a bit of variation when they're on the stand. Um, just to give them that sort of, you know, ununiform look that they would have had. Um, so uh, next up here you'll see pretty quick where I've done the patterns on them by doing some lines and I've got the tartans done on them. I've gone for contrast here. Um, the one guy at the end, he doesn't have as much contrast as I'd wanted, but the, the ones in the middle there, they, they kind of pop. And I'm going to talk about how I did it right after this. Okay, here's a breakdown of how to actually do the tartan. Um, I know in the photos the, they're very small, so um, and you're be going to be concentrating on an area. In the case of these guys, about you know the size of a grain of rice, so it's not really the biggest uh, palette you know to, to, to work with. So base I'm going to do here is the base color. It's a dark green. It's called Hauser Greens from Americana. That's your base color. You go and you highlight it. You bring it up one level. You could bring it up two if you want, but with the target it'll break it up anyway. Like the so your eyes will see it differently. So there's really no point in bringing up more than a highlight. You could do two, I guess. Um, then the next step is you do vertical stripes. And what I do is you start with one of the legs and you do you, your first vertical stripe and you make it just a little bit off center. You make it just to the left or just to the right of the knee. Um, if you go right down straight, um, it, it, the effect isn't as good. I've noticed, I've, I've done a, about 60 of these little guys before. So um, so you do the vertical stripes um, and you start and you just go around around the figure. Um, and then with the horizontal, horizontal stripes, what you do is you do the same thing. You make hor your first horizontal stripe um, just above or below the knee. Um, if you make it right at the knee, same thing, you'll have some problems, but just above the knee you'll get the, the definition that you want. So, um, and then you can make about four or five, maybe you start just above the knee, and then just below the knee, and then maybe one right above the, the, the sort of cuff of the pants, and then working all the way up and around the waist. The waist can be a bit tricky because of belts and things like that, so you've got to be careful there. Um, and then you go down and you do the stripes, the interstripes, the stripes that would be between the vertical stripes. Um, I use, I've been using the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush for this. It's very, very small, um, and uh, it works out pretty, pretty well. Um, you can go through, and you just go and you just you put stripes in between. And then, if you really want to get into it, you can do this, and you can just dot it out, um, the crosses like that. 
and do the cross point. So that's how you do plaid, in basically. So uh, good luck with that. Tell me how it works. Okay, here they are. They're pretty much finished. Uh, all I've got left to do is the base on these guys. But uh, you can see I've done. I've gone through. I've done the weapons. I've got the hair done. Um, as I've done the side weapon here, uh, side uh, dagger, um, and the belt. Um, so that's the one guy with the spear. Uh, next to him, we've got the other guy. Uh, I've got to apologize about the lighting. I'm doing this in a different room, but. There, there you can see the pet, the tar, tartan a bit better. I didn't go f full uh, uh, whole hog on this, but um, but yeah, from from you know from three feet away on a stand, they look great. I mean, they look okay. They, they wouldn't win me any awards or anything like that. You can see some bits of flash and, and things like that on on the uh, scabbard and his heel. Next up, we've got the ones with the shields. Now these ones, I'm going to go into a little bit details about the shields later. I painted these shields and. They don't look that great, honestly. I can say, you know, looking while filming this, um, you can see that you know the checks on here aren't exactly the best. But uh, it is hand painted. It did save me some money and not having to buy uh, decals. But uh, it turns out okay. I mean, for tabletop standard, you know, putting these guys all into one big big clump, uh, it would be a lot, very very interesting. And here's the last guy. Um, I the shields there, yeah. I just tried to make them, just give them a bit of contrast to the, the what, what the figures looked like. But um, the next step for these guys, I'm going to show you how I did the shields of the checkers and all that kind of stuff for for people who might not know how to do it or want to try doing it freehand. Maybe you can do a better job than I have. Uh, but basically, um, after this, I'm going to put them all on a stand and do the basing, and then that will be it for these guys. I'm going to put them on a 50 by 50 base. Uh, because I found that with these guys, with their weapons all over the place, yeah, that's the only way you can really get them all on there and have them line up. So um, next up, I'm going to show you how I did the shields, do the checkers and the, and the little designs on there, and then after that, I'll show you these guys all based up. Okay, this is how I painted the shields. Um, if you don't want to use decals, this is how uh, I tend to do it. So you start off with a base color. Here I've got kind of a sienna brown. Uh, and then I move on and I highlighted it taste. I used brick red, which is one of my favorite colors for highlighting, and a little bit of red. Um, and then what you do is you put a broad stripe right across the, the, the front of the shield. Um, I don't have the shield boss on here, so I use the shield boss as like a guide. And basically put the stripe going on either side of that. Um, and then what I will do is I'll put on, it says four vertical stripes here. But basically on the, either side of the shield boss, I'll put two. I think on the miniature I've shown you, I, I did three or four. I was really going for detail there, um, but if you're just doing it for mass effect, two is pretty easy to handle. Um, and then you come down over here through that, oops, you put one horizontal stripe through it. Um, this is a very, very rough as you can see, it doesn't look that great. But uh, you just put a, one stripe right through the center of that, and then you just go in and you fill in the checks, and then your, your, your checkerboard pattern is done. You can expand this as much as you want. Um, this is just the simplest way to do it. It doesn't look that good now. You got to go in. You'll, you won't get it perfect. You, you, there's constant touch-ups to do with this. But once that's done, you can put the base color of the torques. Um, so what I did is I just basically uh, two little U's uh, or open-ended circles. Like if you got your eyes examined, it would look like this. Um, you know, up, down kind of thing. So you put the base color of the torques in. And then yeah, I just went through and put a little bit of a highlight. So this was like a dark brown. Here I've got sort of a medium, uh, creamy, yellowy brown, I guess. Um, and just to give it a little bit of definition. And then finally, you just do the detail of the torques, like here. Um, you just go through and you fill in the checks, you, you, you uh, clean that up, um, and then you put in uh, just little dots around and give the, the torque some definition. Um, as you can see, th this is about the size of my, my fingernail. Um, and you got to remember what you're going to be working on is probably about half the size of that. So. Um, if you're painting 120 guys in a Gallic army and you want to paint the shields, you know, shields are pretty important. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't win any prizes with this, but this is how I've done it and uh, this is how I'll probably continue to do it. Next up, we'll take a look at the basing um, and how, how I put these guys on a base and try to make it look a little bit more lively. Okay, here I've mounted the four uh, figures on a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter plastic card. I've put epoxy putty um, around the bases um, to sort of blend it down into the actual Ba larger base itself. Here's the, the reverse view um, from the back. Um, I put the uh, basing materials on there and next up you will see them all painted and done and ready to go. Ready for the table. And here they are all based up and all finished. Um, I put some static grass on the base. I've got some little bushes on here from just some regular flock. And I got one of the grass tufts that uh, you can buy I think from Army Painter. 
Um, they turned out pretty well. Um, as I said before, I put them on a 50 by 50 base only because the, the models themselves are so uh, unregimented, I guess you could say. They're, they're wild according to the rules of Hail Caesar, so I think it's wild. Um, never haven't played yet, so. Um, but yeah, they were a lot of fun to do. Um, I hope that somebody found this video uh, at least interesting or at least, you know, a little bit helpful on doing plaid and shields and things like that. I hope to do more ancients in the future. I'm just going to move this guy a little bit here so you can see this guy in the back and get a better look at those shields. Um, and uh, I hope to do some more uh, ancient stuff in the future. I'm getting a little bit World War II'd out. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've got all kinds of World War II projects and things going on, but I, I do find the Ancients a lot more interesting now that I'm getting a bit older. So, Anyways guys, you guys take it easy. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.